first time I encountered these words, Mene, Mene, Bechtel, Kessel, was on a blackboard at the University of Georgia when I was a student there in my geology class. The professor came into the class after the interim exam and wrote Mene, Mene, Bechtel, Kessel, and I had no idea what it meant. I don't think anybody in the class, almost I think a hundred people in the large class, knew what it meant. And I was not a biblical scholar as I think I may be today. And he said it's a quotation from the book of Daniel. And he gave the short version. You have been weighed in the balance and fallen wanting. Most of you have flunked the exam. That's not in the text. I did. I got it. But it won't be up to the, I enjoyed the class in geology, it was very fascinating to do that. But it was again a wake up, I looked it up and then. I think those words again provide, are useful for this day and when culturally find ourselves again, and are dead, not dead. We find a president, I may be speaking, quiet as I speak, who's less than honorable. I don't consider him a immoral. I consider him amoral. You only can be immoral if you have morality. I find the behavior difficult and his sycophants. Having said that, I find the tragedy of Mr. Luther Frank passing away. That was a wound of honor. Her life was not easy. She did with many things, but she sang with heart, mind, and soul. And that I was passing by that choice and had a pocket book with her. Never seen before. And when they had to show it on the Robert show, her singing at the celebration of Carol King's song, and that great song she sang with a uh, woman. I'm not sure what the title Natural woman. Natural woman, thank you. The purse was there. You know why she had the purse? Told by James Brown, before you perform, get the money first, but they may not pay you after. <laughs> and she went there the first time with a purse open. I think that's true of our culture today. How much of our money is going out of our purses? The places, things, and causes. And when the president asked this, says, she once worked for you. No, she performed in your places, in your establishments. There's a difference. There was a normal person. I, I never met her, I met a talk once, CLI. I did a Concord Baptist Church many, many years ago in the past Sunday. I'm sure he does not remember me. But I met him. Like, to say it this way, I met the father of Lee Frank. Not that he was the reverend, a very prominent minister in Detroit, but I met his, I met the father of a great singer. But again, yeah, the journey she had to lead her to sin, the faith she had to lead her to sin. Now, I don't think I ever imagined myself on a Sunday morning mentioning the name Amorosa. We all know who she is, right? I read her book, by the way. I think it's worth reading. Unhinged. It's not that it's accurate or not, but it describes certain things about how things work in our culture and the behaviors that are found acceptable. Because one of the things you kept saying over and over again about the present president, all the many issues, I just disregarded it. I didn't take it seriously, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I also found out she had ordained Baptist minister. So she's the Reverend Amorosa. A number of other things she did. Uh, it's in the book. I assume that question. I don't think she actually wrote the book. I think she was just talking and somebody wrote it for her. But it's an interesting understanding of how things and politics work. And that's the disturbing part of it. This is how it is. One thing she said that really bothered me was about her childhood. The family is on welfare. And that they used to give out the food stamps. They were actually stamped, I remember. That. And that it's kind of an embarrassment to show you what people go to store and show that children. No other country does that, that has social welfare. It has other ways of providing those simple things. Essentially, credit card. 
And that's one thing that she remembered that distasteful. And I'm saying, yeah, that's right. I remember going to school and watching people hand out their stamps. I also remember having campers at the Baptist camp who only got cornbread for a meal, called it Big W, Big Welfare. Because that's one of the things the government gave out free was cornmeal. It was called a Big W, along with Spam. Those things, again, don't come back to my memory, so to speak. Here it is. But now to Daniel. Daniel's book is interesting. In the Protestant and Catholic and Christian tradition, it's placed with the prophets. In the Hebrew Jewish tradition, it's a writing. It does not have the same standard of authenticity as a prophet had. Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Nehemiah. It's a city more of more writing the story as being told. There are some there are some historic documents in it. but it's a, it's a moral thing. It's a parable. And what I find fascinating in this part of my life is that those who call themselves evangelical Christians, in order to understand and explain away their liking for the president of the United States, the administration, because he supports certain things they believe. Let me back up for a second. I think Mr. Trump and I do have a bit of a relationship, by the way. I never met him personally, but we had the same draft board in Jamaica. Um, we weren't probably literally the same draft, but there was only one inch made before he was it. The other thing was, I attended the Baptist church, and I believe he attended the Presbyterian church two blocks away, which at one point I had joint services. I've never met him, that's who called from Jamaica. But I understand that this man had a life's journey. And as it says in Daniel about Nebuchadnezzar, that this man was a man who went to Jerusalem and destroyed Jerusalem. He destroyed the temple. It's a way of showing your powers. Tell me something. You want to have, I think, Ronnie Stephen Thomas. Wow, that's good. That you wouldn't have power. Destroy something. Destroy as much as you can. And he stole all the valuables from the temple. These valuables were cups, candles, plateware, and he brought them back to Babylon and desecrated them. He misused them for his parties. Can you imagine this stuff going to some bar? Did he drunk at it? That's what our convention did. But our fundamentalist brothers and sisters, I should have said evangelical. The word evangelical is used by that to replace the word fundamentalist. Now, I believe that all Christians are evangelical. We have good news. And I've been hearing a lot of bad news lately. Concerning news, troubling news, and behavior. Part of it is the behaviors that I'm concerned. Now, Nebuchadnezzar had certain behaviors. Again, the evangelicals kind of play over and say, well, you know, he kept the Jewish people alive. Yeah, in bondage. And that dismisses, you know, that that would take comparison to the present. He may have had faults, but look what he's doing. He's defending our beliefs. I'm not sure about that either, but that's the story But again, behavior. When you call someone as president of the United States, they said so. If I as a minister of this church use the word XOB about someone in the church, how long do you think the minister? Not long. If I call someone in the door, publicly, how long would I be the minister? If I call someone a low light, 
unintelligent student. And my neighbor remarks that that racial connotation or ethnic connotation is about people. How long would I be the minister of this congregation or any congregation? Unless, I think there's are exceptions. I had certain power over people in the congregation. Like I knew all the dirty money. But I don't know the dirty money. The more 
whole universe does change. We do bend towards it. There are voices crying in the wilderness. They straight the highway of our God. And Christ present in that part of the highway for us that makes it straight. Cyrus was a pagan. He believed in other gods, but not the Hebrew gods, not the Hebrew, Hebrew God we believe in. But he did not desecrate their sacred elements. He gave it back to the Jewish people. We would find someone who's going to give back to us. I use the word entitlements that we all pay for over our lives. Cyrus said to the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, you may return home and rebuild your temple. We will have someone who will come to us. We will rebuild this culture and our societies. There will be a voice crying again in the wilderness like a rose of parks. Like a Barack Obama. They will say, how long? The time is now. The time and place is now for all of us. How long? Now. Cyrus is the only person in the Hebrew Bible who was a pagan. Who in the prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah 45, he was anointed by God. You know what the word anointed is in Hebrew? Yes, you do. You all do. What do we call Jesus? The Christ, correct? Or the I guess we have a Sunday school class for the adults. Yes. The Messiah. Oh, okay. Cyrus was called a Messiah by the Hebrew prophets because he honored God by returning the Jewish people to their homeland and reestablishing the temple. He was a, a king who ruled with wisdom over all his empire, who was tolerant and open to the diversity of people, something we're not seeing today throughout our world. He changed the systems. That's what I'm saying in this, is that the time is coming. It's sad right now. How long? Not long. Because my eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. He's lifting up the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Commit that by itself, by way to the Lord. Trust in him. He will bring it to pass. My, you want to say something? Yeah, and you mentioned about war and destruction, but the United States has always been involved in war. Yep. All the presidents. In recent times, yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's going to change too, hopefully. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It's not long. That's part of faith. Do not be discouraged. I said anything today, do not be discouraged. This is not appropriate behavior, but we do not have to live this way. We ourselves can be powers of example. We don't have to call other people who we may disagree with or dislike names. We may have dignity towards other people. And you're right, we're looking at a culture that doesn't. And it needs to change. And the agents of that change. Who are God's anointed?